Well, I was trying to decide whether I wanted to bring my inner Francis in here or leave it outside. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, I got a big kick out of that uh, article, and um, several people sent it to me because they got a big kick out of it too. I will tell you that when Ted decided to run for uh, governor, and when, uh, and unbeknownst to me, at the same time when Sherry decided to run for the Senate, at different times, both Connie Schultz and I went to Annie Glenn and said, what do we do because we want to help our guys win, and we know now that when you get at this level and this kind of scrutiny that you can get, not only get yourself in trouble, you can get them in trouble, and neither one of us wanted to do that. And she, Annie said, just be yourself. And both of us nervously laughed and uh, said, no, you know, really, what are we doing? <laughs> <laughs> and she got really serious and beamed right in on my eyes and she said, be yourself. People don't like phonies, they never see right through you, and, and uh, that's, that's the way to do it. So I was teasing her later. Um, I told her I went home and tell, told Ted that she told me to just be myself, and that he said, "Well, Annie's pretty good, but you don't have to believe everything she said." <laughs> <laughs> so sometimes being yourself can can get you into trouble. And uh, but I think the being yourself part is uh, if you tend to be more of a, a down-home kind of person, you just might as well be that way because people can see through anything to try to be more sophisticated than you really are. My biggest problem is uh, I'm introverted by nature. Most couples, I think, complement each other. I mean, one's more outgoing, one is more ingoing. You, you find our is there any such, is there any yes. such thing as in going? It's hard. And uh, I have a hard time wanting to think that you all really want to see me and it's your, and I get a big kick out of the fact that most people have no idea who I am. If they saw me out on the street, they wouldn't know who I was. How many in this room would be able to recognize you if you saw me out at Well, that's pretty good for this group. <laughs> about like half. I got that very early on in, uh, in the fact that um, I decided to try to keep a relationship with Hope Pat. She's gone through a bad patch there, especially the last two years. And uh, as a, a spouse of a politician, I understood how that could happen. And a lot, I know that most of us work really hard to to back up the work, and I knew she had done a lot of hard work, especially on uh, that garden. And uh, so I asked her to stay on because I don't know a whole lot about gardening, and I was being myself and kind of let that out. And uh, so she, bless her heart, decided that, that she would stay on. And I think that's not an easy thing for her to do. But early on, we went over to the Franklin Conservatory. She wanted me to meet the people over there and see how they do things. So I had a couple people with me. I think um, she had a couple people with her, and then some of the leadership of the Franklin Conservatory were, were walking around with us. And we had quite a little entourage going. So we were getting ready to go out. Uh, it was coming up the ramp, and there was a woman standing right over here. And she just looked at me and looked at me and looked at me. And, and um, so I thought, well, you know, we locked eyes and it was kind of uncomfortable for me and, and I said, is there something you'd like to ask me? And she said, I'm just trying to figure out if you're somebody. <laughs> <laughs> and she points to Hope and she says, I know who she is, but I can't tell if you're anybody or not. <laughs> And I can promise you, Hope thought that was a lot funnier than I did. <laughs> but it's been that. I've been Hope Strickland in the newspaper. And uh, the funny thing was the other night, uh, the other day, we had a group of people from Ted's district, Old District, uh, Gallia County, was in the residence. I had welcomed them and been there with them and all that. 
and uh, so they turned it over to the guy who was emceeing things. And he said, well, now the first thing we need to do is to thank Hope Cat for having us here today. <laughs> and that's what uh, the people that were with him just razzed him. And of course, he was, he was a banker, so bankers don't like to make mistakes like that. And his face got red, and so I had to bail him out by telling him the Frank and Conservatory story. But as an introvert, uh, that doesn't bother me at all. The people don't know who I am. I can, uh, I can just be myself all I want to. But I have been delighted to find out that that's what most people want, is to be themselves, too. And uh, they, they tend to try to make everything really special and build everything up. But in the final analysis, they want to know that you're just like they are. And Ted and I both like to say that we are just ordinary people in very unordinary circumstances. But in order to do the work of the people, we have to be able to relate to people. So uh, being ourselves is important to both of us. So we, we really enjoyed that article. And thank you uh, for stirring up that part of the conversation, Brian. Um, I'm really glad, and I think Ted, Ted was here, he would say the same thing, that, that you exist. <coughs> also, we have now seen how easy it is and why people get into complacency or sometimes take the easy road out. Very early on, I recognized when I go out into communities and I see equality, uh, Cincinnati here, you know, one of the things that I wanted to do was to help Ted with divisiveness and try to bring people together. The skepticism and the cynicism that I saw on the campaign trail was really breathtaking. So one of my goals as a a helpmate to Ted and a first lady was to bring the softer, more caring side to government to the forefront. So I was going to go out and go right into those areas where people didn't feel like anybody cared about them and at least make the statement that we didn't care. But when I would go out, people would just take me to the best places. they take me to where the programs are really strong and going well. And you can get a sense then you just went where people wanted to take you, that everything was fine and grand in Ohio. And I finally said one day to a group, well, I'm glad to see everything's perfect here. There's nothing we need to do. And they said, well, wait, wait, wait a minute here. So then they, they started telling me uh, what their, their deep concerns were. So it's really interesting the way people are. I mean, they want to show you what they're proud of, and uh, at the same time, uh, don't know how to bring up what the problems are. So I've sent the word down that uh, I don't want to go where the things are really good. And, and I'm frustrating people because they want to take them to their best practices. But I want to go where people are hurting. And I finally, uh, I became the chair of the uh, Children, uh, Family Children First Council because they, are the people who deal with the problems in the communities. And that puts me out in every one of the counties, and it puts me at the table when they're talking about what the problems are. But even those folks want to take me and show me the really good things. And I think some of it is that they want us to keep the funding coming for those good programs. But uh, what we're trying to do is to see where the unmet need is and how much more we have to do.